Hey bitch, and welcome back to another video. If you guys did not see my last video, this is obviously a continuation of that. My last video was on every single thing that you will need for riding or leasing horses. This video is going to be every single thing you will need for owning or purchasing your very first horse. The average person buys one horse for their very first horse, and this video is going to help you be a more intentional and informed buyer. A theme I'm going to be keeping in this video is minimalism. This is what I talked about in my last video as well. Only buy things as you need. Do not go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff. You're probably not going to use it. It's wasteful. You're going to end up throwing it away or trying to resell it online. So trust me when I say it's very easy to overspend, especially in today's consumerism culture. Definitely try to be as minimal and as intentional with every single thing you purchase and only buy it as you need it. Before we get into today's video though, I do want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been sending me fan art. If you want to stay tuned for today's fan art unboxing, it's going to be at the end end of the video. Additionally, don't forget to follow us on Patreon and members and also Orbiting Beasts on Instagram. You can check out any and all of my artwork over there. Obviously, there are things that you as a writer should have. I went over those in my last video. These are things that you should already have if you're an equestrian who is buying your very first horse. Obviously, I'm going to assume that you have already been riding because why else would you be buying your very first horse if you haven't even ridden yet? So if you want to know about every single thing that you as a rider should already have, you can definitely click right here and go check out that last video of mine. What I will say though is the only additional thing I will advise owners of horses to get is some sort of muck boot or paddock boot. This is not something that I talked about in my last video because typically if you're just riding horses or leasing horses for lessons or something, you're not really going to be at the barn too, too much. So chances are you're probably not going to be getting those nice tall boots very dirty. However, if you do own your own horse and you're out at the barn a lot for most of your daily chores, etc., you are going to need some sort of really high quality paddock boot or muck boot. And I will say, just get one and do not skip out on it. If you're going to get a paddock boot, get some really nice waterproof paddock boots that do not fall apart at the seams, or just get a really Really nice pair of muck boots that again do not fall apart at the seams. They're a lot more comfortable to wear to the barn on a daily basis and switch out for your tall boots when you want to ride. The really really cheap paddock boots, although they might seem like the most affordable option, they're going to fall apart relatively quickly. So I do not recommend that people go out and buy the really cheap like $50 paddock boots. Firstly, you want to buy one really nice waterproof tack box. This is my all-time favorite one. It's not expensive. It locks. It's just absolutely fantastic. There's even a little grooming caddy that comes inside of it and it's on wheels. It's easy to take places. For the most part, it fits the majority of my stuff and I have two horses. The reason I say waterproof, I don't recommend the really, really fancy wooden ones because those rot over time. They're not water and all weatherproof. They're very, very heavy and expensive. They're usually not on wheels, so they're difficult to transport places. So I just don't recommend those. Trust me, stick with the ones that are on rolling wheels, waterproof, and relatively lightweight. Next, we're moving over to a saddle. So once you buy your horse, you should get a saddle for them. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people buy saddles before they get their own horse, which is a huge mistake. Your saddle needs to be fitted to your horse. You need to test ride in it. It needs to be exactly what you're looking for for you and your horse. These are all things that you're not going to know about if you buy the saddle before you get the horse. So make sure that you know what discipline you're going to be sticking with for the coming years. Make sure that you know what you want to do with your horse and that you already have your horse before you buy the saddle. And again, I only recommend that people buy one saddle. Just buy one really nice saddle for whatever it is that you're looking to do. Do not buy tons of cheap saddles. I see so many people do that. They'll go out and they'll buy three 
three or four different cheap saddles. Please don't do that. Those saddles don't last that long. They have basically no resell value at all. This brings me to the next one, which is obviously a corresponding saddle pad. I would recommend, again, waiting until you get your saddle to get your saddle pad because different pads have different purposes, different pads have gel, riser inserts, etc., different contours to them. So wait until you get your saddle to get your saddle pad and you only need one. Don't get me wrong, I have a whole saddle pad collection okay all of these saddle pads that i have were gifted to me i would not have bought them otherwise but trust me just get a really nice saddle pad that's neutral color and that's going to be your daily riding saddle pad just get one that's very comfortable keep it clean wash it etc this also applies to boots leg gear bell boots etc just get one set of what you need wait until you get the horse so that way you can fit them properly because there's usually small medium large and x sell sizes for boots. Additionally, you want to get a really nice halter, lead rope, bridle, all of those that fit your needs, that fit your horse, and that are exactly what you're looking for. But again, you don't need more than one. I see a lot of people that go out buy multiple bridles, buy multiple halters, whatever. Just wait until you get your horse and just get one. I think the biggest takeaway from this video is make sure to buy higher quality items. They don't have to be the most expensive items out there, but usually around the medium price point for bridles, halters, saddles, etc., you're going to start finding much higher quality items that will last you a lot longer. Next, you're going to want to be getting one brush set with a bag and then one bathing set. I'll put some of my favorite ones up on the screen that I have personally purchased. You don't need to go crazy with grooming brushes. They're just brushes. And honestly, you should change out your brushes every one to two years anyway, on top of cleaning them regularly. I like to buy new brushes every couple of years. So don't go crazy. Don't go out there and spend like $500 on a grooming brush set. But talking about bathing, you really shouldn't bathe horses frequently because it strips their hair of natural oils and protectants. So what I would recommend is getting one shampoo, one conditioner, and one little scrubby brush. And I usually only give my horses two baths a year. I give them one bath at the beginning of spring when everything starts melting. And then I give them their last bath at the beginning of summer before their winter coat comes in. These are both shedding seasons. Rinsing a horse off with water is perfect perfectly fine. I don't consider that bathing. And that's something that I do do on a regular basis, especially in the summertime. But when it comes to actual bathing products, trust me, you're not going to use them but more than maybe a handful of times a year. Next, talking about hoof care. This is one of probably my most important tips for horse owners, and this only applies if you have a horse that's barefoot. Now, I personally recommend that most horses should be barefoot unless it's actually medically necessary for a horse to have shoes. There's so many alternatives like scoot boots, which are amazing now. There's tons of even Olympic level horses that do not have shoes. So if you have a barefoot horse, this is my all-time go-to product and it is any sort of radius rasp. The reason these rasps are so awesome is because if you have a barefoot horse, your horse will probably get some chips or some flares on their feet during the six to eight week period of trimming their hooves by a farrier. So whenever your horse gets a little chip or gets a little flare, all you have to do is just take that radius rasp, which I like to keep them in my grooming bag, and you just shave that down real quick and it just cleans that hoof up all nice and pretty. And it just kind of keeps their hooves really tidy in between farrier visits. So. I love it. I've had my same radius rasp for six or seven years now, and I refuse to get rid of it. It's the best thing. Next is only applicable if your riding facility does not have these, and this is a lunge line and a training whip. Now, I like to use training whips for all types of on the ground, groundwork training, etc. They're very, very useful for trick training. Obviously, I'm not talking about discipline because I don't believe horses should be beat with a whip for discipline. Any sort 
sort of on the ground training as an extension of your arm for lunging or trick work or whatever, Training whips are great. So if your facility doesn't have them, definitely get your own. They're great to have as training tools. Additionally, if you don't have a round pin, I would recommend getting a lunge line. But if you do have a round pin, lunge lines are kind of unnecessary. I certainly never used lunge lines when I had access to a round pin. So just don't get it if you don't need it. Moreover, we're going to move on to food. Obviously, all horses should be eating a balanced diet. Make sure to talk to whatever vet you're using about an appropriate diet for your horse to make sure that they're eating the right foods. Usually horses that are 100% foolproof, that are eating an amazing forage-based diet, they usually don't really need any grain or additional supplements at all. So this is another reason why you talk to your vet about what you're feeding them. But if you do wanna do a 95-5 ratio, which is 95 forage and 5% grain, just to add a little bit of extra vitamins, minerals, anything they might be missing, that's definitely something that's doable. Always, always keep grain supplements, etc., in steel grain bins. They're not super expensive. You can get them at any of your tractor supply uh, stores, Murdoch's, etc., any of your horse feed stores, they usually have them. This just keeps your grain clean, out of the way, organized, and it keeps mice and rats from getting into it. Additionally, I 100% only recommend measuring scoops. I know that you can go to any sort of tax store feed store and get the standard grain scoops that are two quarts. Please don't do that. Definitely go and buy a measured scoop for grain. Usually they say sweet feed on one side, pellets on the other. This way you know exactly how much your horse is getting. You're not overfeeding them and it's just a lot easier to keep track of. I usually just like to put my horse's name on the line of where I measure his grain to. And lastly, the most important thing that you should have for your horse is an emergency medical box. Now, this consists of a myriad of different items that are very, very specific. I actually recently filmed a video on my medical box and a, a whole tour of it and how it's looking now on my Patreon and members. So I will link that video down below if you wanna go follow us on members or Patreon and just really get to see everything that I have and that I recommend, you guys can check that video out over there. Additionally, for people who don't wanna purchase a monthly membership, I will actually make it to where you guys can just do a one-time purchase of this video. But on top of of a emergency medical box for your horse, because trust me, your horse will be hurt, bitch. Okay, it's gonna happen. Definitely get a book. So many people buy their emergency kit and then don't know how to use it. So please, please, please go out, buy an emergency medical book so you know how to use all these different supplies and how to react in emergencies. So again, I cannot stress the importance of a properly outfitted emergency medical box for your horse and a book that correlates with that so you know how to use it. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope this keeps you well informed. I hope this helps you a little bit. Please, if you're gonna take anything away from this video, make sure that it is minimalism. Try to be as minimalistic and intentional with your purchases as possible. It will save you so much money in the long run. Don't forget to check out our Patreon and members and also follow us on Instagram, which is at Orbiting Beasts. Otherwise, stay tuned for after the credits if you guys want to see our fan art unboxing. Okay guys, let's go ahead and let's get into today's fan art unboxing. Thank you guys so much for sending me all of this amazing fan art. This is not the entire fan art wall, so just because you can't see any of the other fan art that's going up right now does not mean there's not plenty of more space for more fan art. So if you have any fan art you want to send me, that address is going to be in the description down below. We will still be doing fan art unboxings for probably the next couple months. 
ones. Ooh, this one is a gigantic package. Ooh, there's like multiple stuff. It's like Christmas. Wow. Oh my God, this is so pretty. Look at how gorgeous this is, you guys. This is so, so beautiful. This is from Jessie. She said, I've been watching your videos for years and have always wanted to express my gratitude. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Some of these are just like so heartfelt. Oh, wishing you and your family well. I wish all of you guys well too. Thank you so much. This is so, so sweet. And what a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. Wow. Okay, next up, next up. Hannah says, hi, Raleigh. Thank you for continuing your channel and giving us education. Oh, I hope you like my artwork and continue educating others just like me. Oh my gosh. I love it. Look at this. Look, it's Link being sassy. Oh my God, that is so, so cute. Thank you so much, Hannah. Yes, I did decide to continue my channel. I was going to stop for a while because as you guys know, I have a lot of other stuff going on in my life as well. I want to say the first 10 years that I was posting videos on YouTube, it was getting really exhausting because it felt like I was just screaming into the void. Nothing was ever happening. People didn't believe me that these people were abusive or these people were bad, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, more stuff started coming to light. So I feel a lot more optimistic about having this channel. And I actually feel like there's a lot of improvements being made. Ooh, next one, next one. Oh, see, a little sneak surprise. This is why you got to make sure that you get everything. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God, this is so cute. Uh, this is from Crescent. Oh, she said she's a 13 year old artist. She loves animals. Um, she supports my voice. She said I inspired her so much. Oh, she says I'm autistic, so I have some learning difficulties. So whenever I struggle or get overstimulated, I always watch your channel. Oh, thank you so much, Crescent. That is so sweet. I wish you the absolute best and I'm glad that my videos make a difference. <gasps> oh. Okay, last one. Oh, she sent a photo of herself and her horse. That's so cute. Zoe and Pilot. Oh, she said, hi, Raleigh. Me and my horse, Pilot, love your videos. And you're honestly so badass for advocating in such a toxic community. Thank you so much, Zoe. This is so sweet. Oh my gosh, wow, and look at look at her drawing. Look at how beautiful this is. That is so adorable. Thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you, this really means a lot. Thank you guys so much for all of this fan art. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the wall, but thank you so, so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate all of you. Don't forget to check out orbitingbeast.com and also follow us on Patreon or members if you wanna see extra content. But as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.